Now, I was really inspired to preach this message today. So, God really inspired me to preach. So, I believe it's a now, somebody say a now word. Now word. And I think it's a good word today for healing. We are, I'm ministering on healing. But, but you could take these healing uh, messages and you can, you can transpose them if you need finances. You can use the same uh, keys and get financial blessed. Or if you need help in your relationships, you can take the same keys and your relationships can be blessed. So today I want to minister to you on the power of speaking God's word to affect a healing and a deliverance in your lives. Amen. The title of my sermon is Healing Through the Spoken Word. Somebody say healing, healing. through the spoken word. In other words, there's a miracle in your mouth. I'm going to say it again. There is a miracle in, I'm going to say this, miracles are in your mouth. And do you believe that today? John Osteen, Joel Osteen's father, was a great faith minister. And he wrote a book, There's a Miracle in in your mouth. Amen. And I'm telling you, God's, see, I'm going to say this. See, animals, except, you know, animals don't have the power to speak, but people do. God has granted us the power to use words. Amen. And so words are powerful. Amen. And, um, and I believe that when we get a handle on, on words and speaking the right words, uh, we will experience breakthrough in our health. We will experience breakthrough in our finances. We will experience breakthrough in our relationships. you believe that today? And so I believe that. So, so our words are powerful. Amen. And so God's word spoken and acted on can produce miracles in our lives. I've, I've been ministering on grace. And walking in greater grace can produce the highest and the best that God has for each one of us. How many people want to walk in the highest and the best that God has for you? Well, I'm glad I got some takers this morning. I don't know about you, but I don't want to walk in the lowest level of my faith in God. I, I don't want to just go from valley to mountaintop to mountaintop down to valley. I don't want to have a yo-yo Christian experience. I don't want to be up one day, down the next, up one day, down the next. No, I want to stay on the mountain of God. Amen. And I believe that you can stay on the mountain. You don't have to go into those valleys now, I know that we're going to have some trying times in our lives, but that's why we have faith to get us through the trying times in our lives. Amen? So, so greater grace produces greater power, and greater power is produced through faith-filled words. I'm going to say it again. Greater power is fulfilled through faith-filled words. Not fear-filled words. <laughs> Not words of doubt or unbelief. Amen? We, we've all had those kind of words in our lives. You know, words of doubt and unbelief. Amen? But we want to have, somebody say, faith-filled words. Faith words. Amen? And in Acts 4.33, it says, And with great power the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, and great grace was upon them all. Now, we see that the apostles walked in great power, but what was the key to their great power? The key to their great power is right in this verse. They gave witness to the Lord Jesus Christ. This is powerful because when we give witness to the Lord Jesus Christ, what he has done on the cross for ourselves, for, for humankind, for for all people, what he has done. When we, when we give witness to the fact of what Jesus has done, what we're doing is we're bringing faith into our lives and we're able to receive all that Jesus paid for. Amen. Do you believe that today? So, so they gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when they gave witness to Jesus, 
In other words, Jesus is the Word made flesh. So when you give witness to the Word of God, I'm going somewhere this morning. When you give witness to the Word of God, you're giving witness to Jesus. And when you're giving witness to Jesus, it's going to produce mighty working power in your lives. Do you believe that today? I believe that. I believe that. My question to you is, have, what have you been given witness to lately? Oh, I'm going somewhere this morning. What have you been giving witness to lately? Have you been going through a struggle? Have you been going through some problems? Have you been going through some issues? We all go through them. But are you focused on those things? Or are you focused on the Word of God? Amen. Unfortunately... We don't have our glorified bodies yet. Unfortunately, we're not out of our bodies because if you were out of your body, you would be more free than you are in your body. Because once you get set free of this body, you're free. But unfortunately, this body has pains and aches. <laughs> are you hearing what I'm saying today? We encounter the world. Anybody, anybody getting older in here? You, you don't run as fast as you used to run? Well, Michael might. Well, I don't know. He might be faster. But you don't run as fast as you used to run. You don't, you don't, you know, you don't get up as quick as you used to get up in the mornings. Amen. Amen. And, uh, and, so, and so we are dealing with a body and we're dealing with five senses. Amen. Some people don't have uh, good sense, but we need to have the five senses. And we're dealing with these five senses, so we're always uh, evaluating circumstances and situations. Yeah. If we don't feel good, we say, oh, I don't feel good. Oh, my Lord. And we tend to focus on what our body is dealing with. Is that right? And so we focus on what we feel, but we're not people that walk by feelings. We're people that walk by faith. See, if you, if you allow your feelings to control you, you are going to end up in a ditch. If you're going to allow you, the, the, the circumstances to dictate to you, you're going to start speaking the circumstances. And so we got to be very careful because it's easy to say what is. What's the difficult thing is, is to say what you want it to be. A lot of times we say what it is. I'm from, you know, uh, you know, I'm from Missouri, the show me state, right? So, so you, you know, show me. In other words, in other words, you know, I evaluate what's truth is what's happening, but that may not be real truth. That might be natural truth, but there is a higher level of truth that we can walk in. It's called supernatural truth. It's called the word of God. The word of God is greater. The power of God is greater than natural forces that we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. Sometimes we're giving way too much heed to the natural forces that we're dealing with. And God has created you to be a conqueror and not to be conquered. I'm going to say that again. God has created you to be a conqueror and not be conquered conquered amen so my question is again what are you giving witness to are you giving witness to the natural circumstances or are you giving witness to the supernatural word of god that can put you over in every area of your lives amen so great power was produced when the apostles gave witness to jesus now this is a scripture that we're familiar with and i want to hone in on this particular scripture Revelation 12, 11, and this is powerful. It says, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to the death. So we see here that this scripture is talking about being an overcomer. And so being an overcomer, number one, we're, we overcome because of the blood of Jesus. Amen. I'm going to say again. We overcome because Jesus shed his blood on Calvary to put us in a right position with God. And so when we're in a right position with God, 
Our words matter to God. Some say, well, it doesn't really, it doesn't, praying doesn't really make a difference. I beg to differ. See, you, your words in prayer can make a big difference with how God moves, not only in your life, but in the lives of your family. So, so, so first and foremost, uh, the blood of Jesus puts us in right standing, helps us to be victorious in this life. I like what it says in Hebrews 9.12. It says, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, he entered the most holy place once and for all. That's talking about the holy of holies in heaven. Having obtained eternal redemption. Man, I might have to get out of my seat this morning. Glory to God. Having to obtain eternal... Say, I have, I have. eternal redemption. Woo, that's powerful. In other words, what, what Jesus did outpace what Adam and Eve did. I'm going to say that again. What Adam and Eve did, they sinned in the garden and that caused death to enter in to humankind. But what Jesus did, he died on the cross for our sins and that caused life to enter in to our lives. So we have, say I have, eternal redemption. Ooh, that is powerful. We have eternal, eternal redemption. I, I just could just stay on that point for a couple of minutes. But let's continue. So we are redeemed. What that means is the blood of Jesus was the payment for us to have redemption and relationship with Jesus and God the Father. Because we have that relationship, our words mean something to God. I'm going to say it again, because we have that, that eternal relationship, our words mean something to God. Matter of fact, the Bible says this, that Jesus is the high priest of our confession or profession. Say, I'm a professional preacher, glory to God. We're called to be professional preachers or speakers. Jesus is the high priest of our confession of his word. Let, let me just go a little, let me go to the next level of his word because you can confess some things and if it's not lining up with the word of God, then those things that you confess can hurt you. Some people say, oh no, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. That's a lie from the pit of hell. Words can destroy your life. They say, sticks and stones. I'd rather have a stick and a stone hit me than, than, than the wrong words. Because the wrong words spoken to you over and over again can create a stronghold, a pattern of thinking that keeps you trapped for the rest of your life. Are you hearing what? Some people are trapped because they have strongholds, patterns of thinking, and they can't seem to break out of. And I'm going to say this, you can break out of it. God's blood and His Word can break you out of any shortfall. Yeah, I'm saying it this morning that you might think that you have. I'm saying you think you have it because you don't have any shortfalls when you're in Jesus Christ. So say, well, I got some weaknesses. Stop focusing on the weakness and start looking at Jesus because He is the strength of your lives. The Bible says, let the weak say they're strong. Stop talking about your weakness and start talking about Jesus' stripes. Don't focus on Job's boils. But Job, but Job, yeah, but he got healed. And he got doubled for his trouble. He came out really good. At the end, he came out. And, they, and, and most scholars believe what Job went through wasn't wasn't 20 years of suffering. It was like nine months. That's what most scholars believe. He dealt with it for nine months. So I'm going to say this. Your problem has a time limit. Amen. It's only going to be so long. That, that time limit is only so long. In other words, God has a leash on that dog that's trying to eat your lunch. 
And that leash is only so long. That dog that's trying to eat your lunch can only go so far. In other words, the devil can only go so far in your life. He can't go any further than what God will allow. You say, Pastor, how, how, where are you getting that from? Where are you getting that? Well, because when, when the devil presented himself to God in the book of Job, God said, look at my servant. But he said, you can touch some of his stuff, but you can't kill him. So listen, God was sustaining Job in the misery that he was dealing with. In other words, the devil could only go so far. And I'm going to say this to you this morning. The devil can only go so far in your life. Amen. But we can, we can, we have something to do with how far he goes in our lives. Do you believe that today? We have something. Say, I have something to do. See, there's a God side and a man side. It's not all God and it's not all man. It's a combination. We got to be working with God. God works with us the hope of glory. Amen. Say, God's working with me. Amen. Even in all my stupidity. No, no, don't go. God is working with me. Say, God's working with me. See, I'm getting you to, see, I'm getting you to speak. See, I'm getting you to speak something out. That's why I have you confessing a lot. You say, well, man, I'm preaching more than the priest. Who are the most powerful people on planet Earth? The most powerful people on planet Earth are the preachers. Why? Because they're preaching the word all the time. And when it's the preachers that are the doers of the word. Let me put it that way. <laughs> because you can preach it and not do it. What, pastor? You can preach God's word and not do God's word. So you got to hear it, obey it, and do it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Today? You can hear it. And, it's, and James said the hearers of the word are not blessed. The hearers only of the word is not blessed. It's the hearers and the doers of the word that's blessed. Amen? So, so, so number, number one, it's the blood of Jesus that puts us into victorious living. Number two, we overcome sickness by the word of our testimony. Uh, what we testify about reveals where our heart's at. What we're testifying about in our lives reveals where we're at in our lives. And sickness can be changed to healing by our confession or our testimony. What you confess, you possess. That's positive and negative. That's positive and negative. What you confess, you possess. So what have you been confessing lately? Are you confessing? I'm tired. <laughs> I'm, I'm so tired. Are you confessing? No, just say you're sleepy. Amen. Now, now what are you confessing lately? You know, I, I always have a hard time getting up. You're going to always have a hard time getting up. Amen. What are you confessing lately? Oh, I'm not a morning person. Change that confession. You are a morning person. Early to bed, early to rise, makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise, right? Amen. Early to bed, early to rise. So you, you love the morning time. Glory to God. You say, I'm not a morning person. You are. You're here this morning. Glory to God. So let's look at a familiar scripture that's really powerful and that, that, that should give us a little bit of power in our words. And it's Isaiah 54, 17. You may be familiar with this scripture. But we're going to break it down a little bit this morning. It says here, No weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue which rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. This is a heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. This is, this is a powerful scripture. Uh, when, when we need to be you know, standing on the scripture when we're dealing with physical or spiritual attacks. So no weapon formed against your relationships, your health, your finances shall prosper in Jesus' name. So, so, this, so, so, so God protects us. Say God protects me in the storms of life. In other words, the enemy doesn't have the power to overcome you as long as you're standing 
on the Word of God. And I love that because God protects us. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your left. This is Psalms 91. But no plague shall come near your dwelling. Say, I believe that. I believe so that means you don't need to be afraid of plagues. You don't need to be afla- uh, afraid of flus. You don't need to be afraid of these things because no plague will come near your dwelling. Amen? Number two, every tongue which rises against you in judgment, you shall, be, you shall condemn. This is powerful. So the enemy works through speaking words against us to get us into judgment. Again, I'm going to say this again. The enemy works by speaking words against us, and he, and he wants us to speak those same words. And if we're speaking the enemy words, we will get into judgment. If we're speaking what, what the devil's speaking, then we come under the judgment. But if we're speaking what God is speaking, then we come under the grace. In other words, we don't want to speak what the devil's speaking to us. In other words, the devil could say, you're not going to make it. And you, if you start saying, I'm not going to make it, then, then that's what's going to happen in your life. But if you say, you know, I'm, 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 I'm a loser, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to make it. No, you've got to change that and say, I'm more than a conqueror. I'm victorious in Christ. God causes all things to work for good to those that love God and called according to his purposes. Amen? And so we've we got to understand this. So the devil is constantly trying to accuse us and condemn us before God the Father. But God's word is always vindicating us over the devil's accusations against us or even when people speak against us. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? So, so even when people speak against us, God's word is more powerful and can overcome what people have said to us in our lives. People may say negative things about us, but what God says about us is more powerful than what people say about us. What God says about us is more powerful than what our parents might have said about us. Amen. 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 Parents sometimes, and especially parents that aren't saved, can say a lot of negative things to their children. They could say, you won't make it. You won't amount to anything. You're going to end up in a bad place. No, my Bible says, I know the plans that I have for you, plans for good, to give you a hope and a future. So number one, the right to condemn, we have the right to condemn negative words in our lives by us lining up with God's words. Number two, we have the gift of righteousness, and because we have that gift of righteousness by the blood of Jesus, uh, that gift of righteousness enables us to speak the right words, and God uh, will line up the circumstances to the words that we speak. So, so we need to make sure that we're condemning every, you know, every negative word that comes into our thought life and comes to us. We need to condemn it. In other words... The devil will speak negative things. You're getting sick. You're getting worse. It's, it, it's, it, it's, it's going bad. And you're going to have to do something with those thoughts. You cannot say those thoughts. You're going to have to do something. You're going to have to speak. See, when Jesus was in the wilderness and the devil was trying to tempt him in the wilderness, I believe he tempted Jesus with thoughts. I believe he gave Jesus a thought. I don't believe it was an, auto, uh, an audible voice. That was coming in the air to speak to you. I believe it was thoughts. That's how the devil works, is through thoughts. He gets us thinking wrong. And if he gets us thinking wrong, he'll get us speaking wrong. And if he gets us speaking wrong, then we'll start acting wrong. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? So if you think right, you'll speak right. If you think wrong, you'll speak wrong. And then you'll eventually, your actions will follow. Your actions follow your thoughts your words, and then your actions. That's how it works. So that's why the Bible says when the wrong thoughts come in, to, and the wrong thoughts are designed for you to speak those thoughts out of your mouth, and when you speak the wrong thoughts, then that's how uh, negativity can come into your lives. But we want to speak the right thoughts. Say, I'm speaking the right thoughts. That's why the Bible says casting down every imagination and every high thing that exalts itself it, it, of the knowledge of God. you got to cast every high thing that tries to exalt itself over the Word of God. The devil's trying to exalt himself 
over the Word of God in your life. How does he do that? Through symptoms, through circumstances, through, through afflictions. He's trying, the devil's trying to exalt himself over the Word. He's trying to make you think the Word is not working. And I'm going to say this, as long as you, as long as you think that way, it won't be working. But you've got to start thinking a different way. You need to start speaking the Word over poverty, over sickness, over death. You need to speak the Word of God. Amen? I love that because, uh, because Jesus spoke words. Jesus spoke words to the devil and he said, it is written. And when he said those things, see, he didn't overcome the thought with another thought. You can't overcome thoughts with other thoughts. You can only come, overcome bad thoughts with words coming out of your mouth. So when, it, when a bad thought comes, speak the word. I'm going to say it again. The Bible talks about speaking the word, not just thinking the word. We th oh, I can think the word. Yeah, but speaking gives it power. When you speak the promise of God's word, we have confession sheets out there. How many people are confessing the promises of God's word? You're dealing with, with, uh, with, with some sickness in your life? Or are you speaking the healing scriptures over your life? Are you confessing them? On, well, that's work, pastor. Oh, my God. I, that's a lot of scriptures. You mean you want me to read these out loud? Yeah, if you're dealing with a problem and you can't seem to get over it, you might want to read, read some of these scriptures. Hey, can I get a witness in the house today? Amen. I want to say this. What God has blessed, no man can curse. And God's word will cause you to overcome in every situation. In the Old Testament, uh, there was a prophet named Balaam. And, 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 and Balak, the king of the Moabites, wanted, wanted Balaam to curse the children of Israel. And, and ba Balaam, the prophet, inquired on the Lord. And the Lord told him that he couldn't do it. He said, you cannot curse what I have blessed. So no matter what the devil is trying to do to curse your life, the devil can't curse you. People can may try to curse you, but their curse is going to boomerang back on them. If they speak evil to you or about you, it will boomerang back on them. Why? Because you have a shield of protection. That's divinely protecting you. And, 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 and uh, what is it? I'm rubber, you're glue. What you say to me bounces off me and sticks on you. <laughs> Anybody ever remember that? I'm rubber, you're glue. <laughs> what you say to me bounces off me and sticks on you. <laughs> that's, that's, that's when we're walking in, in, in the grace of God. Amen. So, so, so my point is the devil can't curse what God has blessed, amen? And, and, and God has blessed us, amen? God has blessed us with his words, glory to God. Now let's look at a scripture that will help us. And this is a powerful scripture. It says this in Proverbs 18, 20. It says, a man's stomach shall be satisfied from the fruit of his mouth. From the produce of his lips, he shall be filled. This is powerful. A man's stomach shall be satisfied. From the fruit of his mouth. Amen. I love this. In the NIV it says the fruit of the mouth of a person's stomach is filled. And with a harvest of their lips they are satisfied. In other words, if you know how to speak the word of God. And speak the promises of God. You'll never go hungry. Because the Bible says if you fear God. You see, you will never go hungry. We have a food pantry out there. <laughs> You'll never go hungry, glory to God. You speak the word of God. You fear God and you will never go hungry. You believe that today? I like what the, uh, the New Living Translation says this way. Wise words satisfies like a good meal. The right words bring satisfaction. So what am I saying? I'm saying we need to be praying, praying a prayer every day that, that, that let the meditation of my heart and the words of my mouth be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? In other words, we need to be praying, Lord, put a guard over my mouth. Because loose lips 
sink ships. And we got to be very careful that we're not speaking the wrong things and giving the devil access. Yes, you can give the devil access into your life. You can give the devil access into your children's life by speaking wrong things over them. You can give access to, to, the, to the devil in our church by speaking wrong things about the church. Amen? Somebody say, I love my church. I love my church. Amen. Somebody say, I'm never leaving this church. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. I'm never leaving. You can't, you can't tear me away from Exceed Life Church. I'm never leaving. Glory to God. Amen. I'm trying to get you to confess these good things. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Makes me feel a little bit better. Amen. And Proverbs 18, 21. <laughs> Proverbs 18, 21. Says that, why, why, what's, the, what's the biggest fear of a pastor? People leaving the church. <laughs> Yeah, that, that can be a fear of that can be a lot of uh, pastors' fears. No, no, God's my source. Amen. That's right. Amen. God, I'm not going to fear people leaving. Amen. But that can be a fear because pe because pastors that fear people leaving won't preach the uncompromised word of truth. In other words, they won't preach the truth. They will just preach what 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 causes people to be happy. I'm not here to tickle your ears. I'm here to give you the truth. You can't handle the truth. Yes, you can. Amen. Glory to God. Proverbs 8.21 Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. So our words have power to produce death and life in our lives. Words are like seeds that are planted in the soil of our heart. Words spoken on a continual basis are like seeds being planted into our hearts and will eventually produce a harvest in our lives. Can I say that again? Words spoken on a continual basis are like seeds being planted in the soil of our hearts and eventually will produce a harvest in our lives. So what are you speaking on a continual basis? That's the question I'm asking. Are you saying, oh man, I'm getting, it's getting bad. It's getting, I'm, I'm hurting. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling more pain. Are you focusing on that? Are you speaking these things out? Or are you saying by the stripes of Jesus, I am healed, delivered, and set free? Now, I'm not saying it's easy to do this when you're under a physical attack. It, it, sometimes it's the hardest thing in the world to speak what is not. And the Bible says, calling those things that be not... As though they were, how did I get married? I mean, how did I find my wife? Well, this is, what I did was I started thanking God that I was already married and I already had my, I put my faith in the now. Now, I learned that from my roommate that got married before I did. Because he said, you know, I'm married already. I said, you're crazy, man. You're not, you're single as I am. But he said, I'm married. I said, yeah, right. And he got married a lot earlier than I did. So, man, I guess he was married. You know what I'm saying? So, and, and he started saying this. And I'm like, oh, man, you're just, ha you're kind of kooky, man. But you know what? Spiritual things sound a little crazy to the natural mind. I'm going to say it again. Spiritual things are a little off to the natural mind. It makes you think, that guy is a little out there. You know what I'm saying? He's saying all these things. He's saying he's a millionaire and he has millions in his bank and he can barely pay his bills. What is wrong with him? Be eventually, you might see that. N not, not that you can barely pay your bills, but that, 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 that you, eventually you're going to see those things. I have confessions of prosperity out there. And I and I this is before I, I I wrote and I was inspired by God to write these confessions. The, the Holy Spirit said, "I want you to write confessions on prosperity. You got them on healing. You got them on who you are in Christ. You need one on prosperity." I said, "Okay, God, I'm going to take every scripture I can find and I'm going to put it as a confession on prosperity." And I and I put that together by the grace of God, and I started confessing that I have investments. It's all in that. And that I, that I have bank accounts, and you know, more than one, and all that. I started confessing that years ago. And guess what? I only had one bank account, and I had no investments. Okay? And then eventually, now, I have bank accounts, and I have investments. 
that are doing very well. Thank you very much. By the grace of God. But I didn't have that when I started out. And, I kind of, I, and now I look, hey, hey, some of this stuff that I've been speaking over the years is coming to pass. So what you speak today, you will have tomorrow. Are oh, you hear what I'm saying today? The very sum total of your life is what you spoke yesterday is what you have today. Can I say that again? The very sum total of your life is what you've confessed yesterday. Your confessions of yesterday is your realities of tomorrow. Mm. That's, that's good preaching, Pastor. Your confessions of, uh, of yesterday's are your realities tomorrow. And if you get perfected in faith, it will be your, your realities today. In other words, what you say today can come to pass today. Are you hearing what I'm saying today? What you say today can come to pass today. So, so what are you planting? What are you planting in the soil of your hearts? Amen? Now let's look at what Jesus said. This is powerful. Look at what Jesus said. Jesus said in Matthew 12, 33 and 37. He says, either make the tree good and its fruit good. Or else make the tree bad and its fruit bad. For a tree is known by its fruit. Brood and vipers, how can you be evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. A good man out of a good treasure of his heart brings forth good things. An evil man out of an evil treasure brings forth evil things. But I say to you that every idle word men speak, they will give an account in the day of judgment. For by your words you'll be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. Amen. So this is powerful. So the first part of this, Jesus is saying that people are like trees. Think about that. He was using an analogy. He's saying people are like trees. We shall be like trees planted firmly in the soil of God's word, and we shall produce in old age if we're planted in the house of the Lord. And so, and so, so, so Jesus likened people to trees, and he said people are like trees, and they can either be bearing good fruit or be be bearing bad fruit. And I don't know about you, but I want to bear good fruit. Because if I'm bearing bad fruit, I don't want to be cut down. Because the bad people that produce bad fruit long enough will eventually be cut down. But I don't want to be cut down. I want God to continue to prune me. You prune if you do and you prune if you don't. He will prune you. Amen. When you're bearing fruit, that means you're growing in God. That's what that means. Bearing fruit, you're growing. You're not backsliding. You're not going backwards in God. You're moving forward in God. And he will prune you and in that pruning process so that you can bear more fruit. So God wants us being fruitful Christians. Somebody say, I'm a hundredfold good fruit bearing Christian. That's what a good fruit bearing Christian. That's what I pray all the time. I pray that over you guys. I say, Sea Life Church is a 100 fold good fruit bearing church. So you guys are, are walking in the 100 fold. Jesus talks about 30, 60, and 100 fold. Why can't we walk in the 100 fold? You can. Say, I'm a 100 fold. Good fruit bearing Christian. Now say that three times fast. Amen. We'll continue. So by the words you'll be justified, and by the words you will begin condemned. A good man out of a good treasure of her heart brings forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure of her heart brings forth evil things. So, so, so what you put in your heart will either, what will come out will either be evil or good. I'm going to say it again. What you put in your heart, the seeds that you sow, the words that you speak are seeds and they're being planted into the heart and the soil of your heart. And so we need to make sure that we're speaking right words. Jesus said every idle word we will be judged. An idle word is an unproductive word. You say, well, what are unproductive words? Many of them out there. You're killing me. <laughs> I'm laughing to death, you know. 
These are idle words. You say, oh, that's not a big deal. Uh, yeah, they, 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 even even the, 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 the new generation, they would say, that's sick. I'm like, what does that mean? That's sick. <laughs> that means it's good. <laughs> oh, you're sick. You know, that's sick. Which means it's cool or something. You know, I said, see how the devil works in words? He, twi he wants you to say stuff. He wants you to speak stuff that, that, that that's our death words. And he wants to put them in our mouths. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or remember when you say, that's bad. But that means good. If you're bad, you're good. Right? You know, we got that from Michael Jackson. Be bad, you know. Right? But that's good. But that means you're good, right? No, no, listen. Ba -ba 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 bad. No. Bad is the bone. But anyway, uh, 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 the devil wants to work in our words. How about, uh, you, know, you know, think? don't be saying that's killing me. Because those are death filled words. I know, I know it sounds like, oh, pastor, you're going a little... No, no, these are idle words and we keep saying these idle words, then they're going to come, become realities in our lives. Amen? By our words we'll be justified and by our words we will be condemned. The greatest words that you can ever speak in this life, are you ready for this? Are you ready for the greatest words that you can ever speak in this life? Are you ready? Amen. It's the Lordship of Jesus Christ. That is the greatest words that you can confess, that you can confess in this life is the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Many people will die and go to hell. They could be decent, moral people that try to do the right things and might act better than some Christians, but will still end up in hell. Why? Because they never confess the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And you got to confess the Lord. You have to receive Jesus as Lord of your life. If you don't confess Jesus in front of people of this world, He won't confess you in front of the Father and the angels in heaven. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? So I like what it says in Romans 10. It says here, uh, verse 6, working our way down, the righteousness of faith speaks this way. Look at this. We're talking about words and speaking. The righteousness of faith speaks this way. Do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above, or who will descend into the abyss, that is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you and in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. So I'm going to say this to you this morning. Every word of God is the word of faith. When you're speaking the promises of God out of your mouth, you're becoming a faith preacher. Are you hearing what I say? When you're confessing, I will live and not die, and I will declare the works of the Lord, you're preaching and speaking the word of faith. If you, when you start confessing, with long life, God will bless me and show me His salvation, you are, you are speaking the word of faith. When you say, by Jesus' stripes, I'm healed, delivered, and set free. By Jesus' stripes, I'm healed. When you say that, you're speaking the word of faith. Amen. And so I like this. And then it says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. So it says here, for with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For whoever believes in him will not be put to shame, but there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord is over all, rich through all, who call upon him. And I love this last part. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So are you confessing the Lordship of Jesus Christ in your life. You said, yes, I did. I have given my life to Jesus. But are you confessing the lordship of Jesus Christ over your health? Are you confessing the lordship of Jesus Christ over your finances? Are you saying, Jesus, I declare your Lord over my finances. I declare your Lord over my health. I declare your Lord over my relationships. I'm declaring that you are Lord. Are you continuing to declaring the lordship of Jesus Christ in your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying today? Jesus is Lord. 
by the glory of God. And He's Lord over every part of our lives. you got to believe that today. So I declare that Jesus is Lord. Amen? And we can overcome every weakness when we start confessing the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Now, Jesus showed us how to do it. And Jesus was, if I could say it this way, was the prototype. What I mean by that? Jesus is the second Adam that came down here to walk this life perfectly. Adam messed up. And Jesus uh, was a, the Bible called uh, Jesus a speaking spirit, glory to God. A life-giving spirit. Jesus' words were life-giving. He said, my words are spirit and they are life. So Jesus is a, uh, a speaking Savior. And I'm going to say this. You, you are speaking spirits. The power you possess in your words are amazing. And if you start understanding how... That's why the devil doesn't want you praying. That's why the devil doesn't want you speaking God's word. Why? Because he knows it will produce power, not only in your life, but in the lives of people all around you. He knows that it will produce power. So he's going to keep you from saying those confessions out there. He's going to keep you from confessing the promises of God's word. He's going to get you so busy that you don't have time to confess the word. Until, until the devil hits you over the head and, and you got something you're dealing with, now you got to pull out the scriptures. i got something to deal with. Where's those scriptures at? They're, they're lining the birdcage. You know, where's those scriptures at? You know, no, no, you need to be speaking the scriptures before the devil hits you over the head with circumstances. You need to start, why? And then, because you're going to be locked and loaded. The word of God's going to already be in your heart. And when the devil presses you, what should come out of your mouth is not yabba dabba do, but should be the word of God. Are you here once? I used to watch a lot of Flintstones. Amen. <laughs> and, so, and so that's, you know, you, you got to be like Papa. Oh, I can stance. I can't stance no more. You got to get to a point where you're speaking the word before the problems come into your life. Hallelujah. Then you won't need to go from miracle to miracle. You'll walk in divine health. God's good with miracles. God's into miracles. But you know, there's a better way. Why, Pastor? Is there something better than miracles? Yeah, it's called divine health. It's never having a problem. I mean, for the miracle, you've got to have a problem. <laughs> but I, I'd rather, I don't want to work. I don't want to walk in, in miracle to miracles. Amen? I want to walk in the divine health. I want to walk in the blessing. And when you're walking in the blessing, you don't need the miracle. Why? Because you got the blessing. Is that right? People say, oh, I, I, I need another miracle. My God, what's going on, man? Have you been in the Word? No, not really. <laughs> Amen. So, so I love this because Jesus shows us something here in Mark 11. And it says here in Mark 11, 12 through 14, it says, Now the next day when they had come to Bethany, he was hungry and seeing from afar a fig tree having leaves, he went to see perhaps if he would find something in it. And when he came to it and found nothing but leaves, and it was not the season for figs, in response, Jesus said to it, let no one eat fruit from you ever again. And his disciples heard it. Notice this. This is powerful. That, that this tree was a fig tree, and what I, I call it a hypocritical fig tree, because it looked like it was bearing fruit, but it wasn't. So when Jesus came to this hypocrite tree, that was, that was acting like, I got fruit, I got fruit. Jesus said, I'm ready for a fig newton. And when he came up to that fig tree, there was no figs there. And he said, no man. I mean, that was, Jesus got a little, man, because Jesus was into the figs, you know. He was a fig man, right? And he's a man, no man's going to ever eat fruit from you again, right? Because he was like, man, he was, a, you know, he wanted some figs. Anybody like figs out here? Amen. And, uh. And, uh, and, so, and, so, and so he spoke to the tree. And in verse 20 it says, Now in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. This is interesting. Because they saw the fig tree the next morning dried up. So that sometimes that might tell you that there might be a process in you speaking the word for, for, for uh, the word to produce. It might be a process. Somebody say process. And speaking the word. 
Amen. So it might be a process in speaking a word for it to come to pass. And it says, the next morning they passed by and saw the fig tree dried up at the roots. And Peter remembered and said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered away. Peter was amazed. So Jesus answered and said to him, have faith in God. For surely I say to you, whoever says to the mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them. Notice that. Believe that you already received them and you will have them. In other words, you got to believe that you have your healing before you see your healing. Oh, what, Pastor? I, I got to believe that I have my healing before I feel healed. That's what it's saying here. Believe that you receive them and you will have them. You've got to put your faith in the now. And here it says here that, that, that uh, it says uh, in, in, in a revelation that Brother Hagin received from this. Uh, in, in this it, it says say in some derivative form in these passages three times. And the Holy Spirit told Brother Hagin that you need to speak it three times more than you believe it. In other words, you need to start speaking the promises of God's Word three times more than you actually believe it. Because it's hard to believe something you're not experiencing. Right? So, it, so what you confess, you possess, and if you speak it long enough, you'll believe it. That's how propaganda works uh, in, in the news world. The news will give you information and they want to slant it in a certain way, and they keep giving you that same information over and over again, and you, you swallow it, even though it could be a lie, you can believe it as truth. Is that right? You, if you hear something long enough, you can, and you start receiving it as truth, it's going to be your truth, even though it might be a lie. Is that right? That's why you got to do your due diligence and not believe everything on, on the news. Because everything on the news isn't truth. It may be propaganda. Amen. You got, you got, you got to search. The Bible says a king searches out a matter. You got to search things out to make sure it's so. Amen. And so we see this, that, 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 that we have to speak three times more than we believe it. Amen. And so, and so I'm going to say this. Don't talk to God about your mountains. Talk to your mountains about your God. Don't talk to God about your mountains. And bottom line, Jesus didn't say pray to the Father about your mountains. He said speak to your mountains. And he said whosoever. Somebody say I'm a whosoever. So if you are a whosoever, then you can speak to your mountains and those mountains have to go. And you say, well, that's Jesus. You know, Jesus, he spoke to dead people and they came alive. He spoke to storms and they calmed. He spoke to water and it turned to wine. And you say, well, that's Jesus. And Jesus was doing that to show us that we can do the same. Amen. You say, well, where's that at, Pastor? You mean I can do what Jesus, you can do what Jesus has done. And you say, well, wait, wait a second, Pastor. That, that's Jesus. He's a, but he was a man anointed by the Holy Spirit. And if you stu study the book of Colossians, you'll find out that he laid down his God power while he was down here. And Jesus didn't do any miracles until he was anointed. He was 27 years old and nobody ever heard of him. He was 29 years old. He, you know, nobody, but at 30, when he got water baptized and the Spirit came upon him, he had dunamis power on his life. And his words made a difference. And when you got saved, you got the Holy Spirit in you. You got the Holy Spirit upon you. You have dunamis power. And your words make a difference. So it says in John 14, 12, as I'm closing, Most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father, and now notice this, and whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may glorify in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Think about that. 
Are you using the name of Jesus? I'm telling you, I was talking to my mom, and she was dealing with a hard task yesterday, and she said, help me, Jesus. And she said, it just, ha it just worked. She, I don't know what she was dealing with. Getting a, uh, well, I don't know what you were dealing with, Mom. But she was dealing with something, and she said, Help me, Jesus. And she said, It worked like magic. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not magic. It's supernatural. So, so some of us might need to be speaking the word. Some of us might need, need to be using the name of Jesus. We need, to, we need to do it all. Speak the word. Use the name of Jesus. We need to do it all. We need to pray and believe that we receive. So, so these three points out of this whole scripture, we need to make Jesus Lord and healer of our lives. Number one. Number two, we need to curse sickness and problems in our life. And number three, we need to speak the promises of God's word until they come to pass. Did you get that today? We need to make Jesus Lord and healer of our lives. We need to curse sickness, speak to the mountains, command them to leave our lives. You need to speak to it and command it to leave and they will leave. And then you need to call the promises of God's word in your life by speaking and agreeing with God's word. Did you receive it today? I'm telling you, some of you, I'm telling you, I'm expecting these confession sheets to run out today. I'm expecting you guys to grab some of these confession sheets and start confessing them every day. And pretty soon you're going to be up here on this platform preaching. You can say, Pastor, sit down. I got the word today. <laughs> Hallelujah. I said, you got the word. I got the word. I've been confessing some word. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to run through a troop and leap over a wall. Glory to God. I'm, I'm looking at faith giants today. I'm looking at victors and not, and, and, and not people being victims. I'm looking at conquerors and not and people not being conquered. I'm looking at mighty men and women of God that will overcome every circumstance, every situation that's thrown at us. Do you believe that today? Glory to God. I'm telling you, I preach myself happy. Glory to God. Let's, 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 uh, let's, uh, let's bow our heads in prayer. Father, I thank you for your mercies and your goodness. And perhaps you're here in the audience or perhaps you're listening or watching and you've never confessed the lordship of Jesus Christ. What will keep you from heaven, what, what will keep you from heaven is, is you not confessing the lordship of Jesus Christ. So I want to encourage you to confess this simple prayer after me so that you can walk in the greatest blessing of your life, which is called eternal life, have your sins forgiven and washed away, and have redemption for etern etern eternal purposes. So just say this out loud and mean your heart. Say, Dear God, I believe Jesus died on the cross for my sins. I believe Jesus was raised from the dead for my justification. Today, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for saving me. And Heavenly Father, fill me with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that, listening or watching, we believe you got born again, uh, connect with us. If you're here locally, come out to Sea Life Church. Uh, if you're not here locally, find a good church home and get involved. Amen.